Hello, would you introduce yourself? I am Debbie Barrett Hayes, mm -hmm. and I am an art teacher. Oh, you're so, so much more than that, but yes, you are. A crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable, but also probably true. <laughs> Takes one to know one, I guess. Um, my first question for you is, Miss B, what would make this the best year ever? What would make what? This the best year ever. This year? However it lands for you. Um, that I know all of Allison's kids' names because yeah. it's really important to know kids' names. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And I told you when I said one of my kids at the school I teach at that the kids all have autism, mm -hmm. I called one of them by his name and he was like, oh, yeah. So I know it's, it's like, like knowing you, I don't know. It's something knowing you, recognizing who you are as an individual. Yeah. So I've got to study all the names. <laughs> and then I have an FSU intern. She's a master's level student. Mm -hmm. I think she's gonna be fabulous. And she's gonna stay and help Allison when she comes back from maternity leave. Mm -hmm. So I think, I'm hoping that even though the kids are missing their teacher for 10 yeah. weeks or whatever, yeah. that they will have a seamless, mm -hmm and successful and productive school year. And they'll be, I know they'll be happy when she gets back. Absolutely. But um, they will not have um, just had somebody taking role and telling them to do whatever. Yeah, which is probably what would happen if you weren't here. So I'm glad you're yeah. here. And, I, and I'm also trying to, um, men, as the representative of the retired teachers for the Florida Art Education Association, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of things that will help beginning teachers mm -hmm. so that the retired teachers can help as much as possible beginning teachers. A volunteer to mentor, but also go in and help them set up their rooms or whatever. Yeah. And just present a conference of what to do in your first year, some things to think about, how you organize your classroom, things that we struggle with and there's not always, especially if you're the only teacher in a county, there's yeah. not always somebody to help you. With a little guidance, they can yeah. have. You just kind of, if they're by themselves, they just figure it out on their own, or they don't. Mm -hmm. That's so true. So that would make it the best year ever for you. I love that. Okay. My next question is, how has art been an agent for healing in your life? Mm. whether it's your personal healing experience or something you have helped facilitate or both? Well, I think I didn't realize until I had some things to go through in my own personal life that having art as one of my outlets, um, my best art, and I guess like a poet when they're really struggling mm -hmm. with their life, a poet writes their best poetry sometimes through anguish mm -hmm. and it's not like you have to have anguish to make good art but it is like that is the time when I think um, the wound is open and you are able to express some real truth yeah and so because of that expression of truth and true pain or true love or true loss your work is better because it's not what you think it should be it's what mm -hmm. it is i guess it's more real yeah more real yeah. and true and that's true about probably music mm -hmm. and books and poetry anytime someone needs to be really creative um it's sad to say but it does get us through those mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. and i think what do the rest of the people do <laughs> that's true you know if they don't have that they can go in and bang on a piano or mm -hmm. dance around a studio or paint a slash at a giant painting or something. What do they do with yeah. their feelings and the energy that comes from suffering or heartbreak or mm -hmm. anguish or whatever? What do they do with it? It's a really good question. Yeah. And that's why I think it's really important even for non-artists to discover some form of art that they feel connected to, whether it be singing or playing an instrument. 
or I guess people get it from running. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you can run, I guess people get it from running. And I, I get some peace and solitude from hand sewing. Mm -hmm. So like Allison's stuff, I hand sewed the packages, the bags that I put her packages in and she can use them for toys and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the hand sewing I find very therapeutic because I just take my time and if I mess up, I just rip it out <laughs> yeah. and then do it again. So it's like the thing that I give with a present in it. It's a bag with a drawstring, but it's made with love. Yeah, I think that's the most powerful thing. When, when we make things out of love, genuinely out of love, we don't remember often that we even did it. Mm -hmm. And people will remind us, get that, yeah. <laughs> Miss Prater's room. <laughs> She is. Okay, what up, Hesh? <laughs> She's resting. It's rude. Okay. Oh. Mm, I, can't, I just can't tell what it is. My, my back just hurts. Yeah. Hello? No. Me? Oh, I don't. But I can use it. So when, you, when I give you my book, mm -hmm. he did a similar sort of study. What he did was he, uh, the professor came and yeah, um, stayed in my art room yeah, for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and just observed and took notes. And mm. then he gave me a questionnaire uh, to just sit down at the computer and answer questions and write. I can send you a and then he did a post interview of more questions. So and mm -hmm. so the whole, my chapter in the book, oh. that's how it was done. Okay. Kind Where of can like people a, get the book? It is yeah. sold. You can get it on Amazon and you can get it uh, through the National Art Education Association. And I, somebody oh, told me that I should order it through the National Art Education Association because it would be cheaper. Mm. But I had to pay for shipping. When I got mm. it through Amazon, I'm a to. prime, so I didn't have to pay for shipping. So it kind of evened out. Yeah. Yeah. So check the link below <laughs> for Miss B's book. That's so cool. Is this your first published work? No. I didn't think no, so. No, at the other school. At, uh, when we were on campus, I did a chapter in a book um, on mentoring, co-mentoring, mm. and um, I did, my chapter was really about, uh, yeah. to me it was about how teachers, mm -hmm. teachers need to stay involved in their association mm -hmm. and stay involved with their profession, mm -hmm. not just for their own learning, but so that they keep up to date yeah, I'll let you know. with the trends and issues and topics yeah. that are current yeah, okay. of what educators are talking about mm -hmm. and um, how that helps to grow you as a teacher and make you better I with your kids because you're mm -hmm. not stuck like so I went to high school in the 70s mm -hmm. should I stay stuck in the 70s oh, or should I be in right you've all the 2020 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for real oh my goodness so that kind of helps you not think, oh, I learned everything I needed to learn in college, which mm -hmm. is just not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. Who do you feel like, did you have a mentor? And if so, who was the mentor for you that made a big difference in your life? Well, I had a, a negative okay. mentor, which is <laughs> not really a mentor, but a negative example of what not to be. Okay which was very powerful. Mm -hmm. In high school, I stopped taking art because of my art teacher. Wow. And I begged the guidance counselor to put me in drafting. Mm -hmm. So it was me and 36 boys. Oh my God, I could definitely see that. Oh my goodness. And um, I did that so I could still do some drawing, yeah. but I couldn't stand art. And that, that's a real shame. Yeah. And so I always used her as an example of don't do that to somebody. Mm. Don't make it where they 
love love art, but they hate it because of you. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. And so I still loved art. I didn't stop making art. I just didn't take it with her. Right. Mm. So then my college professor that called me Feathers, <laughs> her name was Annis McCabe, and her husband was a doctor in a mountain town, and they bought a whole town. It wasn't really a big town. It had a general store, a post office, a church, and a big house. And she had six kids, and all the different kids lived in the different houses <laughs> in this town. So it was just a family town hmm. on a crossroads in Virginia. Wow. So it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Wow. And she was a sculptor, and I thought I was going to become a sculptor. And Barb, mm -hmm. my colleague that is a sculptor, she says, when I do a piece of sculpture, she's like, oh, you have some sculpture in you. <laughs> and I always thought I was a sculptor, but I made it in painting. I'll do it after this. I'm going to go walk for a second. Okay. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, I mean, I think that this, the artistic skill sets translate, and even like you said, sewing is definitely artistic in that sense as well. My next question is, you have accomplished so much in your career. Um, what do you feel like has been the driving power for you in guiding you to what is on purpose for you and guiding you to what is right um, and just inevitably having reached all of these accomplishments? I, I, I think, I'm not really sure, but I think that one, I'm competitive, but I'm not competitive like I got to beat you. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. It's a competitive of like, um, I can do this better. Yeah. I think I, it can be better. I think I can do more. I think I can, I think I can get better at this. And so it's, I guess it's comp competing with myself. Oh and not somebody else. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that somebody one time told me, and it's one of my colleagues, told me that I was intimidating. And I was like, that is the last thing I want to be, <laughs> intimidating. Yeah. But when I've talked to somebody about, why would somebody see me as intimidating when all I want to do is help? But it is, I think the intimidating part might be that sometimes I take charge and they don't want me to take charge mm. or sometimes I might act like I know better how to do it or mm. I think I can make it better and they don't want to make it yeah. any better you know and so I need to you know sometimes I have to back off and I do have some friends that will just say you know this is my thing not yours so back mm. off and I will mm. but I I just think like my husband said you spent three nights getting ready for a one 30 minute class. Yeah. And I was like, that's because I only have 30 minutes with them. I want it to be just <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll spend three hours getting 30 yeah. minutes ready to teach. So I don't know. I, I do think it's, it's something in myself that I just, that's just the way I do it. Yeah. Wow. Even the football coach here, he said, I want you to hand letter, I want you to letter this poster with the kids' names on it. So I measured it and did all this stuff and then calligraphy their names. And he goes, I just thought you probably had good handwriting. And I mean, I spent hours <laughs> <laughs> measuring and making sure everything was exact. He's like, I just wanted some nice handwriting. <laughs> I, <got good> hand. <laughs> I calligraphied it and measured everything off it. Oh my goodness. He wasn't paying either. No, so he never, <laughs> not that that matters, but he was like, I didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. I said, well, you should have been more specific about yeah. what you wanted. Why did you bring it to an art teacher? Yeah. Why well, give it to me? Go to the English Give it to sure. somebody There's else some that has pen. nice handwriting. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was making it a, uh, you know, an art, an art project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. What do you feel like? is your proudest moment as a teacher? I'm sure there's a lot, but if you could choose one. Well, I, there's a couple of students that have come, that I told them when they were in high school, mm -hmm. 
you should be an art teacher. Mm. And they just poo pooed it. Yeah. And then after their kids went to school and they, after they matured and they were a mom and their kids were in school, yeah. they went back and became an art teacher. And they said, you told, they loved the job. And they said, you told me back when I was mm. 17 that I was an art teacher. I didn't believe you. Mm. And now they are. Yeah. I think that that's pretty cool because I could see it in them. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you can see, I guess, you could see greatness in some people when they're really young. And if they do reach their full potential, you, you kind of have a glimpse of it. Yeah. And you just hope that they stay on the right path and that they take their gifts and make the most. So you felt like you were integral in their growth. I felt like I was integral in their growth. And I feel like I love it when I can see that they achieve the greatness I already saw in them when they were young. Because sometimes it, that's not how life goes. Yeah. And so it's really nice when they discovered the thing that I already knew they had and they discovered it for themselves and then they expanded upon it yeah. because they saw it was a gift that they had. That kind of makes me want to ask you a more like personal question uh, um, related to our relationship because it was just like in that room right there that I feel like you saw something in me to basically pull me out of middle school art and bring me up to... I did snatch you out of middle school because I felt like your thought processes and your, um, your, your creativity and your drive and your thought processes were beyond your peers. Mm -hmm. And I did not want you being pulled back with them. I wanted mm -hmm. you to move forward you were you were re i felt like you were ready to move forward yeah. and that taking you from middle school up to high school would be the it could be bad because mm. you're with old kids older than you but it could also be very good because you would want to achieve and perform at their level yeah. which would raise you from where you had been in the room with the middle schoolers yeah i mean i definitely think i did too um, mm -hmm. i think back on those years and um, in particular that that freshman year or that like eighth grade year that you brought me in to high school art like i mean you were shy because you were middle schooler so you yeah. were quiet 